Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Plenty of content coming your way. Today's video is all about VAR. And I'm going to ask the question, what is the point in VAR? Because this season, and especially over recent months, I think we've seen enough bad decisions to even suggest that VAR should just be scrapped altogether. When VAR was first introduced, I was a big defender of it. A lot of people said, well, you're going to lose that in the moment feeling when a team scores because you're always then going to be turning to the big screen and wondering, is the video assistant referee going to flag something up? You're going to lose the beauty of the debate in the pubs, in the clubs, or in your sitting room afterwards where you may have been on the wrong side of a decision and debating it in the pubs and feeling hard done by. But as a football fan, I was willing to kind of be okay with sacrificing a little bit of joy and in that moment and that those debates, if it meant that the majority of decisions went the right way. But in recent weeks, in recent months, we've seen enough decisions, and not just from the Newcastle United perspective, but across the whole of the Premier League, to really ask the question of whether VAR is doing its job. And it's not, in my opinion, doing its job. And it's not just not doing its job. It's costing teams valuable points. Now, I go to Newcastle's victory over Nottingham Forest on Friday. Thankfully, Newcastle United picked up all three points and really boosted their chances of a top four finish. But it took really the last kick of the game to get to that stage, when in reality, it should have taken, what, just over the hour mark when Elliot Anderson headed home what would have been his first Premier League goal for the club. And what a moment for the youngster, celebrating their in front of the away fans. But sadly, it was ruled out for Sean Longstaff being offside. And even now, you watch back the replay and you, I'm baffled. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just absolutely baffled about how the video assistant referee came to that point. And then even worse, the referee goes to the pitch side monitor and changes his mind. Now, these people in, in charge of our referees, it's a job that I don't really envy, you know, they get a ton of abuse and, you know, that's not fair on them, they don't deserve that, but they get paid well, they're trained, they're qualified and they should be making the right decisions. And for the video assistant referee to get into the ear uh, of the on-pitch referee and say, right, go to the monitor, we think he's offside, go and have a little look. What is he watching? You know, what is that referee watching? Because you and I, 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 I assume are definitely in agreement here. You watch back that replay. The ball comes off the opposition defender, falls at the path of Sean Longstaff. He is not offside in that instance. I think the argument is, did Felipe deliberately play the ball or not? I mean, come on, he sticks his leg out. Of course he deliberately plays the ball. It's a ridiculous decision. And the most frustrating thing about that is that if Newcastle had just managed to draw that game, you know that would have seriously dented their chances of a top four finish and this is really the most important point like I say it's not just about Newcastle United it's about getting the decisions right that at the end of the season could cost the team a European place it could cost the team a place in the Premier League I look at Wolves and we're going to go to that Nick Pope incident at the last home game up at St James's Park when really I think I've said on the podcast that I thought it was a disgraceful attempt to win a penalty. I'm still kind of on that track, but from a Wolves point of view, I know my colleague Aaron Stokes said, if that's down the other end, we're calling it a penalty for Newcastle. So if I look at it from that point of view, I can see their argument there. Even though I do think um, Jimenez makes the most of it, I still think it, you know, you, it, it being awarded a penalty, you might not have had too many complaints. I actually think, as I said on the podcast, if he doesn't kind of manoeuvre his body in such a fashion, it's a penalty. Now, Wolves got an apology for that. He got an apology for a decision against Liverpool. Um, and they were, of course, up in arms for what happened against Leeds uh, when Traore uh, thought he was fouled, didn't get it, Leeds play on it in the back of the net. Now, what good is an apology to Wolves? You know, if they go down at the end of the season, what good is an apology from Howard Webb to say, yeah, sorry, we, we got that one wrong? You know, if Newcastle had ended up getting an apology um, about Ellie Anderson's goal, what good is that? If come the end of the season, they miss out on the top four by two points. 
of which that would have come from Elliot Anderson's goal against Nottingham Forest. An apology is no good. You know, these referees are trained. They are the highest, you know, officiating referees in the game. They should be on top of their job. Now, one or two mistakes every now and then is acceptable. We're all human. We all make mistakes, you know. No one's perfect. But it is every single weekend that decisions are being made that just are absolutely baffling. Now, I went on Twitter earlier this week and I asked for examples of decisions that haven't gone Newcastle United's way. And it's quite unbelievable, the list. I had a few written down anyway, and people came back with a few more. So let's just go through some. So you have Elliot Anderson's goal against Nottingham Forest. You have Isaac's second goal against Liverpool earlier in the season, which was a judged offside, which, okay, you know, they get the lines out. I mean, the rule itself is absolutely daft, but the, the point here is that where's the consistency? Because we've seen goals this season where it's been just as tight and it's gone in the favour of the goal scorer. Now, again, that win could end up costing Newcastle or that, you know, the lack of that goal can end up costing Newcastle a place in the Champions League. Utterly, utterly frustrating. Consistency is key here and it's they're just not, well, actually, scrap that. They are being consistent. They're being consistently crap with the decisions. But hey, that's just my opinion. What else have we got? We have uh, Wilson versus Liverpool, the handball back in April 2021. And you might remember it. Uh, comes off the keeper. Wilson's judged to have handled it. His hand's down here, though. I'm not really sure how he can get out of the way. Fourth, Joe Willicker puts it in the back of the net. Gets ruled offside. Uh, last season as well, you have had have it on Dan Byrne, the little elbow. Didn't get checked over. Did it? Didn't get pulled back. This season, you've got Wilson versus Man United when he went down in the box. That nil nil draw at Old Trafford. Stonewall penalty. Was it checked? If it was, wasn't uh, given as a penalty. We uh, we've mentioned there Newcastle versus Wolves, where the, the bad officiating went in the favour of Newcastle with Pope escaping that red card. Um, we have Palace versus Newcastle and Newcastle versus Palace early in the season. The Willick goal where uh, Tyrone Mitchell shoves him into Gieta and the goal is ruled offside. I mean, that for me, well, actually, I, I was about to say it's the most baffling of decisions regarding Newcastle United, but actually the Jacob Murphy one against Chelsea last season is probably top of that list. I'll get onto that in a moment. But that one against Palace, you know, I don't even know what to say about it. Like you watch the replay and you just think, yeah, why is the referee not seen Mitchell push Willick into the keeper? You know, that's the first instance. So if you think Willick has fouled the keeper, then the video assistant referee needs to go back and watch the full thing and see that the reason he's collided with the keeper is because the fullback has pushed him into the keeper. Like what again? What are they watching? Are they watching small segments of a move and just you know picking which one, which part of the move they should be? Utterly baffling that one. I mean, I mean it was a dire game, wasn't it? Uh, and then in a draw, Newcastle should have won. You know, Willock scored a perfectly well, uh, perfectly good goal. At the very least, Newcastle should have had a penalty. Wasn't given. And um, what else have we got? Wolves one one against Newcastle when St Maximum got the equaliser. Uh, there was a, a sure tug on Longstaff in the penalty in the penalty box. It wasn't given. Newcastle three three against Manchester City. Uh, stones on Cher where he kicks him in the head, doesn't he? Or there's an elbow. There's a foul anyway. It should have been a penalty, not given. And there's other examples of other clubs as well. I mean, Bournemouth versus Liverpool just last weekend when Van Dijk hurls Solanke to the floor and then in the same move Billings in at the box. And I think it's Chiarty brings him down. Neither were given West Ham versus Chelsea. Sue check the handball where he's got the ground. He's clearly handled it. It was a judge that that was his fallen hand. That's what kept them, you know, kind of balanced as he felt the ground. You know, utterly, utterly baffling. And it's just so frustrating. I mean, Marcel Sabatizer uh, on on uh, Whiteley first against Leicester, that high challenge wasn't given. And it's something you would see in a wrestling ring. Wasn't given. And... Look, I, I know people watching this, some of you guys will think, oh, it's a conspiracy theory against Newcastle United. But actually, there is a league tail being done and Newcastle United have benefited, um, I think, where they've been given the most favour when it comes to VAR decisions. Um, of course, like I say, some 
have not gone their way and we're frustrated about them. Some have gone their way. But I think it's just a, it's a bigger point across the Premier League, you know, that when you look at it as a football fan, and this might just be me, I want Newcastle United to qualify for the top four on merit because they've fairly beaten the side. I don't want them to qualify for the top four because the team in fifth have been hard done by by some dodgy VAR decision. Of course, I'll take it. But in an ideal world, we want to get that out of fairness. And at the moment, it's not been fair. And it's not because it's, you know, it's my United, it's Arsenal. It's, it, it's not been fair because of the incompetency at Stockley Park, quite frankly. And I'll just say this before anyone jumps in. This is my opinion, not the opinion of the other thing is Black and White podcast, not the opinion of Chronic Live, my opinion. VAR, it just needs to be scrapped, I think, at this point, because it's just not proven beneficial. We should not be sat here every single week saying, how is that not a red card, or how is that being given as a penalty? You know, because it was brought in to get rid of that debate, get rid of that uncertainty, and it's going to end up costing the team not just a place in the Premier League, but millions and millions and millions of pounds. That's what's at stake here. Now, as I said earlier, you, you know, you're all human and you make mistakes, but it's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. And I know how Howard Webb's come in, one of the finest referees of our generation. He's got a big, big task on his hands. Um, you know, how does he solve? How does he solve all? It's the million pound question. I think one thing I'd like to see is the mic'd up. I think we need to be explaining the decisions. I think not just the fans on the terraces, but the players as well in the moment that it goes onto the screen, they're left behind. They don't know what they're, what, what they're waiting on. It you know, just says they are checking for possible handball, checking for possible foul. And often the players are looking around thinking, what's going on? And you know, the fans on the terraces as well. We need to, we need to hear the, the, mic, the referees mic'd up so they explain the decision. At the very least, they need to come out, I think, at full time and explain their decisions. Um, I don't know what you guys feel about that, but I think there's a lack of transparency. We shouldn't have to be waiting days, weeks afterwards for an, for an explanation to be given. Let's hear what they've got to say in that moment. You know, why have you directed the referee to go over to the pitch side monitor? And that's actually the other thing as well, because I think as soon as the referee goes over to the pitch side monitor, more often than not, the decision's going to get overturned. I know we saw one a couple of weeks ago, I can't quite remember which game it was in, where the referee didn't overturn his decision, which was great to see. But I do wonder if it would just be easier, every time it goes to the VAR, if you just say, right, go over. Just go over to the pitch I monitor regardless, because therefore you don't have this expectation and anticipation that it's going to be overturned. Because at the moment, that's what you've got. I think every time it goes to the VAR, send them over and therefore it'll just become the norm to go over there's a there's an issue with angles as well isn't there you know where a tackle looks worse from one angle you know let's make sure the referees are getting showed every single camera angle possible let's make sure they're getting slowed in slow motion in normal time you know because there's a lot of different elements to what they're getting shown which is making their decision all that bit harder i think um and they just kind of stand up for themselves, you know. If they think they're in the right, believe in yourself because you're the on pitch referee. Again, though, it is hard for the on pitch referee to, to always get it right, but that's the frustrating thing. It was brought in to help them, and all it's doing is creating more controversy, more anger, more frustration. It's not doing its job, it is just not doing its job. It is, uh, Taking away, you know, the attention on on the field matters. You know, like I said, we shouldn't be discussing this. That's what we are discussing week in, week out. It's what's getting discussed on Match of the Day. It's what we're writing about on Chronicle Live. Okay, it's what we're talking about on the podcast. We should not be here doing that. We should be talking about a brilliant bit of play or a brilliant save or what have you, not focusing on what the referee did or did not get right. But sadly, the only consistency with VAR is that it's just not working. Howard Webb, you've got to sort it out, man. It's, you know, you just got to sort it out. It's not good enough. You know, if clubs didn't pay all this money to get these cameras and what have you in and pitch out monitors to be sat here at an end of the game saying, well, we're there. 
they've got that they've got that massively wrong. And and I tell you what, actually, one of the most frustrating things is, is that often the decisions they're getting wrong, you can see in real time what should be the right outcome. You, know, you can see that that foot's high. You can see that that tackle w w was awful. You can see it's it's a, it's a, it's a handball or whatever whatever. And that's the most frustrating thing that a lot of the results, a lot of the fouls they're getting wrong aren't really that complex to get right. Very easy for me to sit here and say that. I get that, but massive frustration. Maybe some of the rules need to be changed as well. Could you argue? I mean, the handball rule is a little bit uh, debatable. But then again, they're not even getting that right. Pointing back to that Sue check one, you know, the, the, when you're seeing a defender tugging on the shirt of someone in, in the box, Sean Longstaff against Wolves, for example, they're not getting that right either. Um, so. The big question there is, is it the rules are too complex or are the, offici the officials just not, you know, understanding them and not applying the right logic to them? Goodness knows. It'd be interesting to be a fly on the wall, wouldn't it, down in Stockley Park, making these decisions. And that's the other thing as well. They need to be quicker. Well, I guess do they actually? No. Let us know in the comments, right? Because I think often you're talking two, three minutes before a decision is made. And at that point, the doubt's already setting in, you know. If it's taken two or three minutes to draw the lines or to have a look and then send the referee to the pitch side monitor, you're already thinking, well, actually, this must be pretty close. This is going to get overturned. This is going to get ruled out. But do you take that if the decision is right? Do you take the three, four minutes that you lose in that moment if the decision is right? Or do you say, come on, speed it up. Let's speed it up. Let's make it quick. Let's make it a minute, two minutes at most. And let's keep the game going. But then does that risk you rushing the decision? I guess it's irrelevant when they're just getting all the decisions wrong anyway. But yeah, <laughs> there you go. So let us know in the comments what you think about what. Is it doing its job? Personally, me, I don't think so. And that's from someone who was a big defender of all when it originally came in. It's not doing its job for me. What solution? Do you scrap it for a little bit and then try and come up with a solution? God knows what that solution is. Do you keep going and hope that the perseverance and the practice will eventually iron out any issue as well. We've been seeing this for, for many months now. You just have to hope that it doesn't cost the team dearly. You know, we're fortunate that we're sitting here saying that Friday's decision against Sir Anderson didn't cost Newcastle United. Um, but if you're a Wolves fan, you're looking at that Newcastle uh, Nick Pope incident, you're looking at the incident against Liverpool, goodness me, um, you may be worrying a little bit because it could cost you your place in the Premier League. And that is what's on the line. It's got to get sorted out. Let us know your views on VAR in the comments. This has been Everything is Black and White Podcast. Hit that subscribe button and head over to chroniclelive.co.uk for the latest Newcastle United news.